Hi, I'm John from John's Films. Today I'm going to show you how to make DaVinci Resolve work the best for you when you're transitioning from other applications. Many of us have found that DaVinci Resolve with its non-subscription based pricing to be our favorite in LE. And I think what you'll find as you get into it is that it's even better than Premiere. But one of the first things you can do to help your transition is to go into DaVinci Resolve and download the free version. I'll put the link below. Click on Keyboard Customization and then choose in the top right to change from DaVinci Resolve Key Bindings to Premiere Pro Key Bindings. That'll give you a little bit more comfort as you move over. You can use exactly the same keys that you use in your everyday workflow. Now I would suggest that you wait and finish out all of your existing projects in Premiere Pro and try out DaVinci Resolve on your next project rather than trying to transition because you would have to export uh, XML Final Cut format and then import it and then rebind your media and there's no sense in doing that right now when you're in the middle of some work that you need to get done. The next thing I would do is go into your playback and depending on the configuration of your computer and the timeline footage that you plan to edit I would set up your proxy mode to be either off, half, or quarter. Well, What does this mean? This is uh, referring to the play window that you've got here for your timeline and for your clips. And so I would look at that and say, well, I've got a pretty beefy machine. I'm going to be editing 4K footage. So I'm going to start with it in off mode and see if it works. Otherwise, I'll drop to half. Now, what this does is it means that it's not rendering, and your monitor probably can't do it, but it's not rendering 4K pixels into this window. Instead, it's cutting that in half and allowing it to run more efficiently. If you're likewise on a mid-range machine and you're editing 1080p, maybe you start and try it in half resolution and drop to quarter if you need. In practice, I've really noticed the drop from half to quarter a lot more than I've noticed the drop from full resolution or off to half. Next thing you can do is set your render cache. The render cache is when uh, Resolve in your timeline pre-executes and saves a copy of the edits that you've made to your timeline and it represents it in this blue line. So I've previously had this rendered and it's cached and that's why it's blue. If it were not, it would have rendered as red. So I'll show you now if I turn the render cache off, everything goes red and gone. And as it plays, it's a pretty hefty machine so it still works great on this 8K footage but when I get to the 6K 3.1, it drags a touch. Now I can make that better by going to either a playback at half resolution or I can go into my render cache and set it to either smart or user. In user you're able to select individual clips and sections of your timeline you'd like it to pre-cache. In smart you're able to do that but it also will make choices for you. So it will make choices about what it thinks might be difficult to render and it will cache them. As you edit the footage it will update the cache. That seems to work extremely well and you'll notice as we get into this 6K footage that was giving me trouble, it's running perfectly cleanly now. Now that you're saving things to a cache, let's check where that cache is because that will dramatically affect the speed at which your computer is able to read off of it. So as we come into our project settings found under File, Project Settings, we'll see what the timeline resolution is and you can bump this down if you don't need to render out that high and the video monitoring. This shows what it is the native or off setting for the resolution that you've got in your window there. I'm going to set it down at 4K 2160p. Further we're able to optimize uh, the working folders that we're using. Now this gets important. The gallery folder that's just strictly where the still images you capture on your color tab go but the cache is much more interesting. If we move that cache to a drive that is not running my operating system or DaVinci Resolve or even my project footage, then I'm able to put it into a place and I'm going to put it right here in the disk cache. And now it's going to save those renders off to a separate disk. And then I'll have no disk I.O. buffering as I'm pulling the cache out and working with large project files as well as the operating system and uh, a DaVinci Resolve. It's important to build a strategy when moving these items to other disks. If you're going to be using 
project files, operating system, and DaVinci Resolve on the same drive, don't move your cache just so, so it's not on the same drive. If the disk is significantly slower, for instance, a USB drive or some other disk access. In this case, all three of them are M.2 NVMe drives, and so separating them makes a lot of sense. Finally, the last thing you can do is look at your hardware configuration under Preferences. That's in the DaVinci Resolve menu, Preferences. And here you can see your hardware configuration, including your system memory. You can up that if you are frequently working with large timelines with a lot of effects. Further, you can set the uh, change the mode by which graphics cards work. The auto mode will typically work just great for you. The important thing to note here would be if your graphics card was not showing and you had a discrete GPU attached to your computer, it would be worth investigating so that you could get the best performance out of your hardware. So these are a few of the tips I have for how to make DaVinci Resolve run cleanly on your computer. If you'd like to see more tutorials related to a transition, please let me know in the comments and subscribe. Thanks for watching.